Hey friends, and welcome into Cross My Heart Ministry. Laura McFarland here. It is the month of the 4th of July of Independence Day. So your home and my home and your porch and my porch and all of the little banners in town and all of the displays in the stores where we shop and even our attire. I've got on my navy blue shirt and, and my red shoes. And if you could see them, they're red. Uh, but it's the month that we love to pull out all the red, white, and blue. And that's what we're doing this month with Cross My Heart a little bit because we're talking about the word free or freedom from our Write the Word bookmark. We're featuring this red, white, and blue graphic. And so as we celebrate the freedoms that we have in America and as we celebrate our Independence Day and we get all patriotic and we salute the flag, I hope that you are also choosing to write the word with us. And I hope that as you do that, you find that that word may mean way more than you think it means to quote that word, that phrase from um, A Princess Bride or one of those movies. That word means more, I don't think that word means what you think it means. And, and while we know that, that freedom, what it means to us as American citizens, as women of God, as citizens of heaven, as women who love the word of God, as we read and write the word free or freedom each day this month, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, I hope that you are reminded to believe what you already believe, or you have some new insight to go a little deeper into the Word of God, to understand the freedom that you have in Christ and what that really does mean. I hope there's something new that you discover. If this is a new concept for you, if you're tuning in today because you're a friend of my friend here, and I'll introduce her in just a moment, I hope that you will consider not just supporting your friend by watching, but printing a copy of the bookmark. The link is in the notes below, and you can jump in wherever and just start reading the word and writing the word with us. Just look up that one verse, write it out, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you, and I think you will find that you are blessed so abundantly by becoming a woman of the word day by day and seeing what God has for you here. Well, what we have for you here on the channel this summer has been such a delight and so very special to me as I brought friends in from Bible study every week to help me unpack some of these verses. And today I have my dear friend Stacy. Stacy's a part of our study. She's a woman of God and a woman of the word. And I know you're gonna be blessed with what she has to share with us. It's been just marvelous to see all these dear friends say yes to my big ask to come in and do this recording. It's been very challenging, more challenging for some than for others. But I think they would all agree that as they have leaned in to do this hard thing, they have seen the Lord provide. They have been blessed by seeing the Holy Spirit take them a little deeper and reveal, tr reveal truth to them from his word. And so the verses on freedom this month begin in Genesis. They go all the way to Revelation. And so my friend Stacy, which one of these uh, verses from the bookmark did you choose? And would you go ahead and just read that aloud for us? Absolutely. Um, Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Okay, so the, the man-made title in my Bible above chapter 5 says freedom in Christ. And so there's our word. When Stacy read this, you heard the word freedom right there at the beginning. And so Stacy, of all these verses... Tell us why you were drawn to this one and, and tell us some of what God showed to you as you studied it. You know, I loved um, I loved just the, the, the truth that we have freedom in Christ, you know, that we can cast off heavy burdens of sin and um, we can rest in what he has done for us that gives us true freedom yeah. from that. Yeah. And um, when I look, started looking into this verse, um, to put it in context, you know, Paul wrote this letter to Galatian believers and was speaking to them during a time when false teachers had pervaded churches. They were trying to require the believers, the Christians, to observe Old Testament laws and rules. Mm -hmm. And we'll touch on that a little bit later as well. Um, but, you know, let me just add... Yeah. That's not, that's not unique to the first century. Down through every generation, including ours today, there are false teachers that want to present truth or ideas that are not part of the Word of God, adding this extra yoke. And so mm -hmm. what, it, there's a reason that, that, that this is canonized in Scripture, because it was a problem then, and like so many things that are human nature, 
it's still a problem today. And so we need to know what the false teaching is. And the best way to do that is to know what the true teaching is. Yes. So yeah, yes. I'm glad you brought up and let us see what was going on then and let us sit and marvel and think, and it's still going on today. Absolutely it yes. is, absolutely it is. And um, when this, when Paul begins, you know, he states very directly, very clearly, the reason and purpose for Christ's death on the cross. It is for freedom, freedom. And so, you know, what, what freedom is he referring to? Um, what is he talking about? Freedom from what? Mm -hmm. And so freedom from the law, you know, as, as we were just discussing, you know, before Christ's sacrifice, we lived under bondage to Old Testament laws. You know, we, they, we were burdened by demands that we could not possibly keep on our own. And so it was through Christ's death and resurrection that that bondage to the law was broken. And so Christ, his perfect life, his holy sacrifice on the cross was the complete fulfillment of that law. And, um, you know, the, the, the promise that anyone who trusts in him for salvation um, is reconciled with God and has true freedom from the law. And it reminded me of, of John 8, 36. Uh, it confirms when it says, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And that if is not conditional. You know, I read it as when. When the Son sets you free, you will be free. Not just free, but free indeed. It's a fact. It's reality. It is a guarantee. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so for the, the Jewish believer, the Jewish believers that were listening to this, who had been raised under the Old Testament law, who had been raised coming every year, making those sacrifices, seeing that an innocent animal had to die to atone for their sin, knowing that as soon as they, they made the sacrifice and were declared clean and righteous, that five minutes later they were gonna be unrighteous again and tainted by sin. Mm -hmm. It was just this continual cycle. And so it's difficult in some respects for us to understand that, but yet many of us were raised or possibly in a legalistic type of church or family where it was keeping the rules was so important. And we just, or maybe it's just a self-imposed desire to try to be that good girl and do better and try harder. And Paul is reminding us, you're free from that. And that's the whole point of the gospel. It's the grace and the freedom in Christ just to finally come to the place that you say, I can't do it. I try and I try and I try mm -hmm. and I just can't do it. And guess what? You don't have to. If we could do it on our own, Jesus would not have had to die. It's mm -hmm. the whole reason that he became that once and for all mm -hmm. sacrifice. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And, you know, in addition to freedom from the law, you know, Paul is also talking about freedom from the consequences and power of sin. Yeah. Because without Christ's action on the cross, the ultimate sacrifice, the shedding of his blood, we remain slaves bound by sin, which means we are rendered powerless and we have no rights and no hope. Right. But and at the end of time, of course, the consequence will, will be eternal punishment. Right. And that's not a popular message in today's culture, but it's a truthful message. Yes. Just as a, as a doctor that withholds the truth about a diagnosis that's going to lead to death and just doesn't want to burden his patient to tell them that truth, that that would, would not be kind, it is not kind for us to, to tell people that there is hope beyond this world apart from Christ because there is not. Our only hope is found in the person of Jesus Christ. The release of the consequences of our sin is only found through the person of Jesus Christ. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, we, when we place our trust in Christ, his atoning work on the cross releases us from the bondage of sin. And this is now when we can enjoy fullness of life in Christ, you know. And um, as I was thinking through this, you know, again, freedom in Christ is not freedom or a license to sin. It is freedom from sin, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's such an important point. It really is. It absolutely is because it, it would be easy to sort of interpret this very liberally and say, oh, well, it's all covered by grace. I'll go do what I want. Mm -hmm. uh, and so 
I sort of see it as two slippery slopes, that there's this freedom at the top of the mountain, at the summit where we raise our hands to Jesus and we praise him for what he's done. But the two slippery slopes that you slide down away from the truth of the gospel, one is liberalism and one is legalism. And the legalism is what Paul's talking about here, that you got to do this, you got to do that to earn your way to get to the top of the mountain. But the other, so it says you have to, but the other slippery slope is the don't have to. It's all covered by grace. I can just do what I want. And so in a sense, that may be true, but I think a real, a, a believer that has been transformed by the, by Christ and truly submitted her life to him should have a want to. There should be a desire to obey him and to live his, his word, mm -hmm. not because you have to, but because you, you want to please him because it's motivated completely differently to love him. You're not trying to earn your salvation, but you're behaving differently because you already are saved. Yes, yes. most definitely, most yeah. definitely. As I continued um, studying through this, this scripture, um, I so enjoyed looking closely at the significance of some of the key words in this verse. Um, they're so important to understanding Paul's message. You know, he tells the, the uh, Galatian believers there to stand firm, you know, and think about the posture of when we stand, you know, when I stand, I am upright. I am ready to go on my feet. You know, I am I at eye level with whatever I'm facing. I can go toe to toe with whatever I'm is in front of me. And so it's a defensive stance or, or posture, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that's, it really is a military term. If we yeah. would go over and look at the Armor of God passage, Paul talks about the ready stance. Mm -hmm. And so a soldier who's ready or even an athlete who's trained to, to, you know, think about a basketball player or a football player holding that ball and, and leaning in and kind of on his toes and ready to pivot in either, either direction. Mm -hmm. That's that's a, a well-prepared warrior, a well-prepared, a well-trained athlete who's ready to go in one direction or another. You're ready to stand and ready to pivot and ready to lean in to face whatever you have to go. So that's a, that's, I'm glad you're honing in on the keywords and especially stand. That's a theme for Paul. We see it in more than one yes. place in his writing. Yes. And when you think about standing <clears throat> in contrast to sitting, I am in a more vulnerable position when I'm sitting, you know, um, I, I'm not as quick to my feet. Um, perhaps whatever is I'm facing is now above me. So I'm maybe I'm subservient, you know, so it's not the ideal defensive stance. Good point. Right. So right. I found that, you know, quite significant. And then, um, to stand firm, I looked up the definition of firm and there, I loved every word that defines firm. And um, each one gave me a different picture of what standing firm would look like. Not yielding, solid, securely fixed in place, steadfast, wavering, not shaking or trembling. If I'm standing firm, I am without fear. There you go. And you know, can that be said of our faith? Are we unwavering? Or are, are we firm? Are we unyielding? Uh, and there are the, the truth of God's word is not up for debate or argument. And, and we see people in our culture and our times that say they believe the word of God and their, their children make a choice or something happens in their lives. And because of their love for another person or because of their own paradigm, they want to compromise or, or cut corners. And, and really standing firm in the word of God is declaring this is what God's word says. Now, mm -hmm. sin messes it all up. And when we mess it up, there's grace to cover it. But it doesn't mean that we change the word of God. It's, ter it's tantamount to grabbing a pair of scissors and cutting that part out. And just because sin has, has taken over someone you love or something has happened in your life to wound you or hurt you, stand firm in the word of God, my friend. Let's be women of God who stand firm and believe what God says. Yes. Oh, Stacy, I love this. Oh, Thank you for your, well, your preparation and your work and insight. I learned so much studying through this verse. It was such a joy. Um, and I too found, you know, those descriptors to be such very strong and confident words that reflect, should reflect our faith and trust in what Christ has done to guarantee our true freedom in him. Right. You know, right. which is right. just amazing. Right. Um, Paul goes on to say um, to the believers there, 
Do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Um, here we have Paul leading an, again with another direct command. At first he said, stand firm. Now he says, do not let. So these are commands he's giving the believers. And the word let jumped out at me. Do not let yourselves be burdened again. Let means that now I'm allowing something to happen. I'm allowing a burden of sin into my life because of the choices that I make. And that happens daily because of an old sin nature that creeps in on a daily basis. Um, so I, I, I see that this is a command from Paul to the believers to be mindful of on a daily basis. And it takes me back to Ephesians 6, the armor of God, um, where it says, you know, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Yes. yes. It is. We don't want to slip back into that sinful nature. You know, every day we we stand firm and we do not let ourselves be burdened by sin. Yeah. You know, Stacey, I want to, I, and my mind was connecting the dots between some of what you've said, thinking about where do we most often sit? You were contrasting standing has us ready, sitting has us a little bit more vulnerable. And when we sit down, usually we have a remote in our hand. And when we have a remote in our hand, we are vulnerable to letting ourselves be persuaded by an agenda that someone has laid out for us. And so I am a girl that likes to watch her, her television shows as much as anybody else. I'm a girl that likes to, you know, if I've got some mindless things that I can do while I'm watching and being entertained by something, I'm not saying throw your TV out, but I, I am very much aware. And I hope you are very aware as well that very often there is a, there is an agenda there's a cultural norm. There are some things that the producers and the writers of that content want to have us buy into. And so we have to be ready and, and perhaps even pray before you watch it. Lord, you know, I'm, I'm going to just take some time off here to watch this, but let me not let myself be persuaded to believe anything that is contrary to your law, contrary to your word, contrary to your truth. And I have to tell you, there have been a couple of times that I've just decided I don't need to be seeing this. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be watching this. Yeah. And I just turn it off and stand up and go do something else. So we just need to be aware mm -hmm. of where we are allowing ourselves. We are letting ourselves to be seduced by something we watch, something we hear, a podcast, um, a, 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 an actor or actress that we revere, even sometimes a friend, a well-meaning friend who just wants to vent to us. But, you know, who, what are we allowing? You know, what, whatever we listen to or watch, there is stuff that comes in, and we need to have that filter that comes from the Word of God. I like that word, let. Thank yes. you for um, allowing us to see, to see that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, as we continue on in, in this verse, again, Paul says, Do not let yourselves be burdened again um, by a yoke of slavery. To be burdened. Okay. A burden is something that you carry with difficulty. Um, we know what that looks and feels like. Last night, I was attempting to load a computer chair into the back of my truck, okay? There was already a small nightstand back there, and uh, this computer chair, spin, everything on it spins. The seat part spins, the legs spin. So it's heavy, and I am wrestling with a computer chair you know, I've, I've got to wedge it into what space is left in the back of my truck besides the nightstand. Um, I'm trying not to bang the nightstand. I don't want to bang my truck. And it was heavy and it was awkward and I struggled and it was hot. So now I'm starting to sweat and it is not a pretty picture, you know. And that's, that was a heavy burden. That was something heavy for me to, care, to carry. I was struggling. And what we have here is, is imagery. It's a picture of... Um, how sin weighs us down and causes us to struggle and causes us to stumble. Mm -hmm. And um, we, it, Paul goes on to reference a yoke of slavery. A yoke was a, is a device that binds or fastens two things together. And it's a symbol or a metaphor of servitude, subjection, slavery, where there are, are no rights and no freedoms. And so we have a picture of us uh, being yoked to our sin 
we are unable and powerless to free ourselves from its control, and we cannot separate ourselves from our sin without the indwelling spirit of Christ in our lives. And he frees us from that burden. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so when we come to him and we follow those same commandments, those same commandments that can create this burden and this yoke of slavery, but when we try to obey those commandments in him and through the power of his Holy Spirit and in freedom, it becomes a joy. We want to live for him. And, and we, do, we receive grace when we fail, as we most assuredly will. But it's not that burden and that yoke of measuring ourselves and coming up short every single day. I hope you see the difference yes. of obeying in Christ versus obeying under that yoke, that burden of slavery to sin. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, um, I was also reminded of what Jesus tells us in Matthew eleven thirty. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I thought, oh my goodness, here's another stark contrast. You know, what does a life in Christ look like? What does a life without Christ look like? And so I broke it down. You know, what is the experience when we live in Christ? It is freedom. You know, what is a life in sin? Bondage, complete slavery. Um, You know, Christ says that his yoke is easy. The yoke of sin is difficult. Um, Christ says his burden is light. Um, We know the burden of sin to be very heavy and we're going to struggle and we're going to stumble. And then lastly, I looked at what is the difference in the relationship with Christ and without Christ. Um, When we are living in Christ, we have placed our trust in him and we have become joint heirs with him which means God has made us one of his children and we have all the rights to his inheritance, the same rights that he gives to his son, Jesus. And so we're his beneficiaries. Um, you, on the opposite side of that, what's a relationship without Christ? It's a life of sin. We are slaves. We are powerless. We are unable to free ourselves on our own from its control. And it's a very hopeless yeah. life. Yeah. What a great contrast. Stacy has outlined the gospel and the life with Christ and the life without Christ. And regardless of what you, you may argue or think, well, I think this or I think that, the thing about truth is that, that it's exclusive. And, and the, the word of God is the truth. And so at the end of the day, just as it doesn't matter if you believed you were obeying the speed limit and you really thought it was 55 and it's only 30, telling the police officer, but I believed that it was actually 55, you're still going to get the ticket. There will still be consequences, no matter how passionately you believed that you were following what you thought was the truth. And my friend, there will be consequences at the end of time. Every person listening to this message will fall into two categories. You either believe that Christ is who he says he is, and you've called on him for salvation, or you have rejected him and you're trying to create your own way. You've somehow bought into the lie that at the end of time, it just your good will be weighed against your bad. But when you leave this world and step into eternity, you will face God Almighty, and you can face him as your father in heaven, you can face Jesus as your savior, or you can face God as your judge. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather have the judge be my father than the judge be the the holy, righteous, perfect God of heaven uh, who will judge all sin at the end of time. If you do not know Christ as your Savior, I hope that that Stacy's unpacking this short verse from Galatians 5 will give you something to ponder, that you will be sure that you're sure, be sure that you know Jesus as your Savior, that you have truly laid it all out and called upon him. I think that probably if you're listening to this channel or watching, you probably really do know Christ. Maybe you made that commitment to him as a little girl, but you would fall into the category of the believers that Paul was writing to. You know Christ. It was for freedom that he has set you free. And so my friend, my sister in Christ, are you living as the free woman that you are? Have you picked up that yoke and burden of slavery? Are you trying to fit yourself into a mold and and be that good church lady or that good church girl and do all these things with the wrong motivation and to do it all apart from him and his power? I want to encourage you as a woman of God, if you know Jesus, to live in the freedom that is yours in him, 
to lean into that power, to maybe do the things on the outside, live to obey those good commandments he provides for us, live for him, but do it without the bondage and without the drudgery. Let him be the father that helps you carry that burden. We'll do all those same things that, that, that maybe the world sees us doing. Carry the casseroles, love people well, be a good wife, a good mom, a good friend. But we do them supernaturally because we do them in the power of the Holy Spirit who abides in us and who equips us to do every single thing that God calls us to do. I want to thank my friend Stacy. Clearly, she's done so much work and such a blessing to have that that teacher's heart to unpack all those words and do all that extra work for us that allows us to have our eyes open to see deeper truth and deeper shades of meaning in this passage. Thank you, Stacy. Happy to be Yeah, it was just such a blessing. And my friend, the Holy Spirit will do the same for you. I just want to encourage you to print that bookmark, run out the word, pray over it. Maybe look up each of those individual words, look at other scriptures, or just use the dictionary and see, unpack what each of those words mean in each of these verses. And trust that the Holy Spirit, who revealed truth, truth to Stacy, loves you just as much as he loves her and as much as he loves me, and he will reveal truth to you from his word. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. For Cross My Heart Ministry, I'm Laura. This is Stacy. Have a blessed week.